the above named defendant and willfully commit a lewd and lascivious act upon the body of a child eight years of age with the intent of arousing, appealing to, and gratifying the lust, passion, and sexual desires of the said defendant. Mr. Driver, do you understand the charges against you? I do. And to these charges, how do you plead? Guilty, Your Honor. With continued therapy, the possibility of any future acting out would be highly unlikely. In my opinion, Mr. Driver appears to be a more than reasonable candidate for probation. In my psychiatric examination of Mr. Driver, he denied sexual attraction to the child. It only wonders if this was more like an expression of anger towards the child's mother. It seems that he had taken a romantic interest in the mother, but instead she began to take advantage of him, using him as a babysitter when she went on dates with other men. From earliest childhood, my son has shown a concern for helping others, neighbors, friends, anybody. He's such a friendly boy. In all the years I've been going to youth activities and Bible study with Dan Driver, I don't think I've once seen him use abusive language. He has such a good outlook on life. He was always early to his appointments with me. And you cannot believe how helpful that man is to his mother. I see in Daniel Driver a genuine eagerness to change. The defendant is ordered to participate in psychiatric counseling and to have no contact with any minor children without the consent of the court. Does he agree to probation for a period of three years under those conditions? I do, Your Honor. and run as fast as you can, but you can't catch me on the gingerbread man. He went to every church on the hill. You know how many single mothers that is? Every last one of them wanted nothing more than a nice man to fix her car, marry her, help with the children, whatever. And Dan Driver was just the perfect man for the job. Alone in the storm, there's always a friend at your side. You need a little boost there, fella? All right? Yeah. Say thank you to the nice man, sweetie. Thank you, nice man. Well, when your dad comes along, you can have my seat. He's in Africa. Oh, nice. Vacation? I'm Danny Driver. Oh, Ellie Nessler. Hi. Hi. A lot of people said he wasn't saved, but I'll tell you what. Sandra and I spent more time with him than anyone else in this county. And I believed his faith was real. I, I just think he had a problem that he was not yet ready to bring to God. Everybody else is going. No, I'll miss you too much. No. That's two measly little weeks. You'll live. Ellie, what? It is a Christian camp. And his older cousins will be there. Thanks, Jan. Water can, please. The term that we use in the world of psychiatry is hypervigilant. Until that time, she'd never so much as left either of them with a babysitter that wasn't a close family member. Please, 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 please. No, 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 Brandon. Please. One letter every single day. And I don't mean a postcard. Yes! Becky, I get to go to camp! Whoa! 
Going to town and raise some help? No, I think I'll stick around, help out with the kids. Out of the way, snakes! Or I'm gonna tie you in so many knots you're not gonna know. Run or just back. <laughs> almost in the clear. And almost run for it! I wish I had a big brother like you when I was a kid. Allergies. Really kicks up something awful in summer. Just take your shirt off. Come on, catch some rays. Here. Thanks. See what? Wow. Is he beautiful or what? Look at those yellow spots. Did you ever think about what you want to be when you grow up? Uh-uh. You ought to think about being a herpetologist. It's a scientist who studies frogs and snakes and stuff like that. I think you'd make a great scientist. In your mind's eye, pick your child, pick someone else's child. Look at the sweetness, the innocence. As you sit in judgment on Ellie Nestler, remember the innocence he stalked, this human garbage, and he stalked it in the worst possible way, as a friend, as a protector. Well, first, he put them on his lap and put his hands on them. It was like, uh, I tried to get the kids to, you know. Here, you can see mine if I can see yours. Like it was all some kind of a fun thing to do, you know. And then he would push it a little bit further, and then a little bit further, and then... It's important for the probation report to cover those events, unless it's covered in the police record. It's there. Then it's okay, Mrs. Nessa. You don't have to go into details. Good, because I'm not. Hey, Brandon, man. You all right? I don't believe the red-tailed squirrels I just found. The whole family of them. Come on, I'll show them to you. Uh-uh. 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 Now, what kind of an answer is that? Whosoever resisteth authority resisteth the ordinance of God, for the Lord beareth not the sword in vain. Now, go on. You, you got the whole school here to sit on your fanny. Come on. One fine camper, Brandon Nestler. Where are they? Just a little farther through here. How do you know they'll still be there? It's because that's where they live. You wouldn't believe some of the things those red-tailed squirrels get up to. Fall down or something? I'm fine. Okay, Jason, what's up? 
you tell your mother or anyone else, I'll kill her. Your mother and your little sister. You know I'll do it. What's your little sister's name? Becky, right? roast marshmallows. It can be anything you want, just as long as I get to see the bestest, funnest thing you did this summer. I saw my little boy's innocence turn to meanness. I didn't know. I, I, I didn't understand. I didn't know how to deal with his pain. So what you're saying is this, that uh, since mom stood up to daddy, it was okay for him to knock her brains out. <laughs> no, of course not. I'm just saying that she shouldn't have tried to block him from leaving, you know? I mean, if you're going to be a woman who stands up to a man physically, then you got to be ready to get knocked down. I mean, if you're going to be a female, then be a female and step down. Oh, hey, Danny. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hi, Brandon. Hi. Hey, 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 manners. Hello. Sorry. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> Should have seen my manners when I was a kid. When's that lemonade going to be ready? some kind of a hint, you know, anything, but I feel like, I don't know, like I'm not getting through or something. You know, whenever we think God's not hearing us, what's really happening is we're not hearing him. No. No, he knows that I'm feeling like I hate my little boy for being such a brat. He's not going to come into my heart until that's gone. No. No, 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 Ellie. No. Uh... Where is it? Somewhere in Romans. Oh, no, here it is. Uh, 838. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God. How about wanting to strangle your own son? You know, actually, I, I don't see that on the list. <laughs> Hi, pal. How's it going? Okay. Hi, honey. I'm going up to the junction to get some stuff for my car. You want to come along? I don't know. I've got a lot of homework to do. Okay. Hey, you know what? If you wouldn't mind, since you're going there anyway, would you mind getting me some paper towels? Sure. Hi, Danny. The snow's pretty. Praise God that it is. Honey. 
Do they send kids to jail if they, like, kill someone? Yes, I think they do. I mean, it's not a jail like adults go to, but it's, it's a place. If I went to jail, would you come break me out? Bob, what are you planning on doing that, that you'd have to go to jail for? Do you think my dad's ever really coming back? People always think it's the battery, but nine times out of ten, it's the alternator belt. Pass me that ratchet, will you, Brandon? Brandon? Thank you. Daddy! Daddy! Any chance a guy get to find a place to crash around here? Daddy! Hey, Jeff, how's it going? Dad. Hey, you, sweetie. Daddy! <laughs> How you doing, pumpkin? Daddy. Will always be an empty patch of floor for you to crash on here, William Nestor Jr. Taking a trip? It's a job I might have to do in the Bay Area. The guy wants an alternator rebuilt on his 56 Bel Air. I'm not really sure about it yet, though. Danny. Everything's all right? Mom. Here, chap. There's something I need to talk to you about. Yeah, what's that? Nothing. Whatever you say. And a couple of nights later, it was somebody's birthday. I don't remember who's in. We had a big sleepover at Ellie's house, all the cousins and everybody. Hey, you're supposed to be asleep. something do you promise not to tell anybody absolutely of course i promise you have to swear i swear come here what's wrong with you what's going on huh i can't tell you Oh, yes, you can. Come on, honey, tell me what it is. What's happening? What do you want to tell me? He said if I tell anyone, he'd kill my mama and Becky. Who said that? Who said that? Daddy Driver. What didn't he want you to tell? Tell you something, this is a secret Aunt Janet can't keep. We have to tell somebody. He'll kill my mama. No, he won't. We won't let him kill your mama. Okay? But we have to tell somebody. Now we're gonna go tell your daddy, okay? No. We have to. No. We have to. We have no. to go tell him right now. Whoa. Well, that 
It's a tough break, man. Well, that's a heavy one. But you know, these things happen more often than you could ever imagine. You can't let it halt your life. You just gotta get on with things. You okay there, big guy? Of course you are. Because you're a nestler. And that means tough. In about half an hour, Billy was asleep. That boy needed that father's understanding and help at that time. And for some ungodly reason, Billy just thought it was no big deal. And he took off back for Africa. Tell this court, doctor, can temporary insanity go on for years? What is the depth of the poison in you when the most precious thing in your life is attacked by that poison? Hearing what had happened to Brandon was the most significantly traumatic event of her life, made worse by the fact that she too had been previously molested and she'd never ever really come to grips with that. I'm sorry, Mom. Oh, for what, honey? You didn't do anything wrong, nothing, do you hear me? Don't ever let anyone tell you you did, okay? Okay, Eddie? Oh, my like nobody knows. He's got guns and knives and he can get away to Mexico. He said if I tell anybody, he'd kill you. He is never going to do harm to you again. Do you understand that? But the police are going to put him away and they're going to burn the key and he will never touch you or anybody else again. Okay, honey? Okay. Oh, baby. Mommy's got you. Mommy's got you. It's okay. It's okay, honey. Mommy's got you now. It's gonna be okay. Oh, please, honey. Oh. This is Nestler. I'm with the Sheriff's Department. My name is Jack Griffin. Right. We received your report. Right, Thank you yes. very much. I wondered if, um,. I might speak with Brandon. No, just no way in hell. This is... Anything you need to hear, you hear from me. I know what the boy's been through, but the sheriff's department needs a direct report to get an indictment. Do you want to get back in that car and get yourself off my property, or do you want me to blow you away? You think you're pretty tough, do you? What I think is I think you're at the wrong end of a hair trigger. It's not unusual for a child to tell a guy in my shoes what he won't tell a parent. You tell me everything. Now, are you finished? Mrs. Nestler. Daniel Driver was convicted of a similar charge of child molestation in Santa Clara County in 1983. He walked. He did a little probation, and he walked. Now, just how interested are you in that happening again? And damn if that fool dog didn't bring back an old boot every time my pa shot down a bird. Didn't know there could be that many boots in one forest. Must have been one under every tree. <laughs> my mom said I could get a dog when I'm old enough to take care of it. Oh, when's that going to be? Yesterday. <laughs> you know, I um, understand that there's a problem that you told your mom about. You think you might want to tell me about that? Well, this it all started... This... You know what, honey? I'm gonna fix the lieutenant some coffee. I'll just be in the kitchen, okay? I'll be right back, okay? <laughs> so 
So what was the name of this camp that you went to? Camp Pine Ridge. Yeah. Is that a nice one? Yeah. Oh, there's, oh my God. This is Nestle. You just touched him, right? That's what we've got here. Just a fondling situation. Sodomy. Repeated. Over the course of a year. I'm gonna kill him. Did the defendant make any statements at that time regarding Mr. Dryden? Objection! Irrelevant. We're talking about the time of the molestation as opposed to the time of the killing. If premeditation lasts a hundred years, it's still premeditation. Objection overruled. Lieutenant, can you tell us what statement the defendant made at that time regarding her feelings toward Mr. Driver? She said that Daniel Driver should be shot or killed for what he did to her son. And did she ever say that she should be the one to kill Mr. Objection. Driver? Objection! Leading! Overruled. You may answer the question. Yes, several times. Several times? Yes, ma'am. I know that's the only way you can feel right now. I'm going to put him down. But that's not what Brandon needs to be hearing. You and Brandon are both eligible for benefits under the Victim Witness Program. Oh, really? I think they'll take over my car payments? I'm talking about counseling. What happened to my little boy is no stranger's business. He's got his family, OK? Mrs. Nestler, he's going to need more. All he needs is to hear that Danny Driver is someplace where he can never, ever hurt him again. That's all the therapy my little boy needs. someday who likes to play around you know that's that's fine mama likes likes it that way but it's in the bible honey a man does not lie with a man that is wrong did she describe conversations she had with brandon that you thought were inappropriate well i, th I thought that when she talked about her own sexual preferences that that wasn't a particularly appropriate comment to make uh uh He's just out there? Brandon is not the only report we've gotten on this guy. We have officers in three counties looking for him. Brandon! Brandon, Brandon, they'll get him. Leave me alone! Honey, they'll get him. Go away! This is where the snap begins, the unraveling, the madness, the end. Please don't make me go to school. Did you notice any changes, any development in Brandon uh, during this time period? He became a basic recluse, just any kind of public activity. 
you know, constantly looking over his shoulder everywhere we went. He was like, there he is, you know, watch the kids. Where's Ellie? He's going to kill her. And there came a time that you uh, thought you knew driver's address. Oh, we had it. The place where he was getting his food stamps. We had family that worked at welfare, and uh, they started to know their way pretty good around the computers. Ellie took off and told Jack Griffin so fast it made my head spin. San Jose is barely three hours away. If there was one whit of premeditation, let's drive down there two o'clock in the morning and blow this snake off the face of the earth. Who's to know? Who's to care? There was nothing like that. She gave the address to the police. This is not the mindset of premeditated murder. Look, I told them on the phone I'd make a partial payment next week. We're not creditors, ma'am. Is there a Daniel Driver residing at this address? Uh-uh. Not anymore. Do you have any idea where we might find him? Man, if I had any idea. If you had any idea what? Is there something you want to tell us? No, uh, look, he took off. I don't know where he is. I'm real busy right now. Becky! Pretty good at that. Do you think you could teach me to do some of that? Uh, it's a girl tradition. <laughs> what do you do? You go on. And after a while, you think maybe, you know, maybe this is really gone. But every time we almost got our lives back together, he would show up again. Like one time at the aggregate plant next door, the kids were playing and Danny came up in his car and tried to get Brandon to get in his car, but Brandon got away and ran home. He tried to kidnap him? Three or four times during that period. You know, if he had just molested him, I wouldn't have done it. It was the stalking and the taunting. and I think he wanted to kill Brandon so that he couldn't testify against him. Really? Yeah, really. Ask Jan's kids. They were they were there, too. This is in the police record? No, of course not. The police didn't believe us. They thought Brandon was crazy or paranoid. Trust and believe Brandon is not crazy, okay? Okay, and then, um... Then it was what? Uh, uh, Christmas. December. 
Let go no, of me! No, no! Listen to me! You wanna play some games? How about I kill me and you kill you, huh? Come on, come on, let's play some no. games! Stupid idiot! What are you thinking? What were you doing? Mom, I wasn't gonna do it! But you can. If you kill yourself, you won't go to heaven, okay? You won't go to heaven! Right there, something broke inside of me. I called God out. I said, you son of a bitch, what can you do to me? You can't hurt me. My pain is greater than yours. You gave your only son, but I would die for mine. If your pain for your son is so great, why don't you, why don't you let me feel it? You let me feel it, you son of a bitch, you hear me? You let me feel it. And I felt this, this terrible pain going up my legs, traveling all the way up my body. But it stopped before it got to my heart. And I told God, you go to hell. Doctor, what is methamphetamine? Methamphetamine, or crank, is a stimulant drug. In many ways, it's more powerful than cocaine, and its effects are longer lasting than cocaine. Can you associate the specific level of dosage found in Mrs. Nestler's blood with any particular previous behavior? When you encounter 0.14 grams per liter, that suggests that rather substantial doses of methamphetamine have been taken sometime in the past. Jack! Hi. Hey, listen, um, a long time ago you said there was some kind of a, a therapy place that, that Brandon could go for free. Is that still, um... Victim witness. Yeah. I'll call him as soon as I get to the office. Oh, that'd be great. Thanks. Hey, how you been? Oh, you don't want to be around me, Jack. You'll never get elected sheriff if people know you hang out with people who take drugs. You're better than that, babe. Sir, could you open your jacket, please? All right, Mr. Encyclopedia, who defeated Athens in the Peloponnesian War? Um... Come on, come on. Um... Uh, okay, all right. Mm-hmm. Sounds like... Yeah. Um, punching. So I got him to let me do home study because I didn't want him killing himself. So, you know, why should I send him to school when his little head's all screwed up? You know, so, so I quit my job and took welfare, and they all said I was a lousy mother, but I was, I was just protecting my little boy. Hello? Oh, my God. Sparring! It was Sparta! <sighs> yeah? What's wrong? What was your sister's reaction? Thank God they got the bastard. Any threats to his life now? Let's go down to the jail and blow him away. Nothing like that? No. No. I don't want to see him. There's going to be a hearing to determine if the case goes on to trial. The DA needs you to testify at that hearing. You don't have to do it in person, honey. They have video. I mean, you can do it on video. They, they do it that way all the time. Right. San Francisco, maybe. Sacramento, possibly. But a video hookup in Tuolumne County? See the hoops I have to jump through just to get donuts at my staff meetings. <laughs> How the hell much does it cost to rent a video camera for an hour? It's not just recording Brandon's testimony. The defendant has to face his accuser, and that's a whole two-way closed-circuit hookup. And frankly, budgetary concerns aside, 
in my experience, confrontation is a necessary part of the healing process. Wait, 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 no, he is not, he's not going to do that, okay? Look, I don't want all the perverts in this town to know what happened to my little boy, you know? And have him go, oh, come here, little boy. No. If he's got the guts to get up there, then you show him the decency of closing the court. That's standard. But if it goes to jury trial, which I very much expect it will, it'll be open to everybody. Okay. You tell that bastard he'd better cop a plea, because if he doesn't cop a plea, I'm going to blow him away. Those are the words she used. To the best of my recollection. I don't think you should be saying that, Mrs. Nestor. Well, I'm saying it. I'm telling you, that son of a bitch better cop a plea and go to jail because I am not making my little boy tell everyone in this county that he was sodomized. He has rights too, you know. No, he does not. This is not a crime against your son. It's a crime against the state of California. You go get yourself done up the rear by someone twice your size, then you tell me who it's a crime against, okay? If he doesn't testify, I can hold you in contempt, which could mean jail, and he'd still have to testify. I'm not doing it. Everybody's gonna know what happened to us. Everybody at school. I know, but it's up to you to keep other little boys from getting hurt, Brandon. Do you understand? Now, I know you can do this. Come on, come on. You're my little tiger. Come on. My stomach hurts. Oh, I know, baby. Where? Just hold on. Mm. Hey, lady, you want a ride? Oh, my God. Girl, what have you gone and done? Government auction. You won't believe how cheap. Come on. Why in the world did you bid on it, Jan? My fiance thought he probably had somebody that would buy it for time and a half again. Did anything peculiar happen as a result of your buying the Rolls Royce? Well, when we came out of the auction, this cop ran out and um, said, watch your back, because the car had been confiscated from these big drug dealers or something. And um, there were some guys hanging around that were you know, asking who bought it. And then on the way home, well, the brakes froze up, and then all of a sudden, all this black smoke started coming out everywhere. Mm, mm, mm. Trust and believe, girl. That's cocaine. <laughs> That's a stash. Oh, man. Hey, do you think they can get your address? Oh, shit. It's in the auction records. Uh, oh, I want this stuff out of here. Oh, Jenny. Oh, where's the hose? Jenny, Jenny, do you know how many tickets to Rio de Janeiro this stuff could have got me and my kids? I know, I know. It's just, you know, all the money in the world to hire lawyers for perverts and child molesters, and they just can't afford to put a video camera in the court. I'm getting a hose. Oh. This is dangerous. Shoot. Did you arm yourself? No, Daddy had a 22 in here somewhere. If there was a gun Daddy didn't have, I never saw it. That's too big. Look. Here it is. Daddy, what are you going to do? About what? That man, cowboy. Ah, oh, come on, you know cowboy. Sees a pretty girl, he just... That's just the way fellas are. Now you're gonna give me trouble, you're gonna shoot. <laughs> Elle? Elle? Yeah, this yeah, is the one. that's good, that's good. Is that good? Yeah, that's light. Break my back. Come on, let's go. The complaint charges you with seven counts of violation of Section 288, lewd acts upon a child. To those charges, how do you plead? Not guilty, Your Honor. You the 288? <laughs> What I want to hear. The 
morning of the hearing, I prayed for Jesus to take away my anger, but he wasn't there. I'll be your little hero. Yes, everybody in the world. He raped me for over a year. He stuck his penis inside me, but his guts are coming out. The apple of Ellie's eye, her reason for living. Oh, oh honey, honey. Oh, my God. <coughs> Brandon, honey, take a deep breath and we gotta go, sweetie. We gotta go. Come on. Come on. Brandon, honey. All right there, son? You'll be able to do this? Yeah. I'll get you fixed up with a 7-Up. You'll do great. Just wait in front of the courthouse, huh? We'll let you know when it's time. Did she say, my son is too ill to go on? Can we get a continuance? Did she ever ask for anything of that sort? No. Okay, no. just sit down. I know you can do it, honey. I know okay. you can. Sit down. Come on. Come on. That's it. Oh, baby. Baby. Oh, baby. Does anybody have a Tums or a Rolex or anything? Yeah, let me look. Here. It's okay. Now take a deep breath, honey. It's okay. Do I don't have anything. To your knowledge, all of your knowledge, did your sister know you had that gun in your purse when you went into that courthouse? No. Uh, Mom, I can't do yes, it. Yes, yes, you can. Now look at me. Now listen. You look at him straight in the eye, okay? And you think about what he did to you. And you think about all the other little children he's going to do it to, okay? And you put the bars on him. You hear me? You put the bars on him. Oh. You can do it. You can do it, honey. Oh. 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 It was a cat-eating... Grand kind of smile was my impression of it. It was victorious. I saw a man who looked very uncomfortable and nervous. <laughs> I saw no sign of arrogance or rudeness on his face. It was a look that said, I'll be free, and I'll get your boy again, and you be damned, and the law be damned. Uh, stop, Mom, stop! No. Mom, stop! Oh, oh, my God. If I had a gun, I'd kill you! No. No, Let me go! Stop it! Describe what happened on that occasion, Mrs. Nelson. I was in the kitchen cleaning up. He had a tendency to hold Brian on his lap. When I came in, he was like agitated. Like he was kind of like excited. Sexually excited. He was rubbing. Objection, Your Honor. Speculation. Sustained. Motion to strike. It will be stricken. Just take it easy. Say what's in your heart. It'll be over before you know it. Did you ever have occasions where the defendant touched you in a way that made you uncomfortable? Mm-hmm. I think it would be better if you say yes or no instead of saying mm-hmm because the court reporter has to put that in the machine, okay? Okay. And that time that he touched you in a way that made you uncomfortable, where did he touch you? On my crotch. Where did he touch you on your crotch exactly? Can you show me, Brian? No, look at me, Brian. Where on your crotch did he touch you? Indicating approximately four inches above the knee on the right leg. Thank you, Brian. 
defense? No questions, Your Honor. Lynn, how did it go, huh? We've lost. He's gonna walk. Anything you get wrong, they jump on you. If you get a date wrong, it doesn't count. If you point to the wrong place, it doesn't count. <laughs> I wish I could kill him. He needs to be dead. This is the snap right here. This is the insanity. Stop it. The other kids can't remember the day. Let's go, They me. can't. Brandon, listen to me. You're the only one, honey. Oh, listen to me. Let's Brandon. go. Did you hear me? You put that son of a bitch away. Let's go, Brandon. You. Oh. Oh. And suddenly I thought, what am I doing? You know, why should my little boy be the one to have all this pain? Where's the gun? Do you have it here? No. Jenny. I don't have it. At that point, my imagination put that gun between Daniel Driver's legs and told him to tell the truth. And then I'm going, oh my God, what am I thinking? So I took my purse and I hung my purse between two officers in protection for myself. Did he take his flat hand and rub it against your penis or did he put his hand around it and rub it? He put his hand around it and rubbed it. Oh, sweetie. Oh. Hey, how's it going? Good. Good. So, uh, your sister get into Cal State? Yeah. Oh, cool. Thanks. Did he say anything to you while he was rubbing your penis? Yes. What did he say? He asked if it felt good. And you said? No. Jack. Jack, come here. Jack. Love to love. Friend to friend. Does anybody care if something happens to this man? That's what she asked him. No, babe. Is delusion the centerpiece of psychosis? Yes. And did you find uh, Ellie Nestler delusional, relevant to the events of April 2nd? She felt that she had somehow been selected to kill Daniel Driver. That the authorities and everybody around her had somehow conspired to make that killing possible. If a cop left the room, it was to tell the DA that the plan was going ahead. If, if someone looked at their watch, it was to make sure that everything was on schedule. She believed that there was a conspiracy, that everybody in that room wanted her to kill Daniel Driver. Then why did she have to conceal the gun? James, did you ever see the man in the room that night before the night? I don't know. Uh -uh. Did you ever see him again after the night till today? No. Now, were you told today that the man who had done this thing to you was going to be here in court? No, yes. And do you... Did you actually recognize the man in court today? Or did you just believe that he was going to be here? I believed he was going to be here. No further questions, Your Honor. How are you doing? It's in God's hands now. Mrs. Nestler, you'll be up next. Taking a recess. Want to go ahead and take your seat? Okay. 
She saw a great significance, did she, in the fact that the DA opened the door for her? Great significance. She saw it as additional evidence of the conspiracy that she believed existed at that time. Himself. No. No, they want me to do it. I'd like to go inside with my sister if that's all right. <laughs> I wish I could have saw tears. You know, if I had saw tears in this man, if I had saw hurt in this man, if I had saw any compassion. I would have left it in God's hands. And as a consequence of this uh, psychotic, deluded state, did you find that she lost the capacity, the ability, to tell moral right from moral wrong? Yes, I believe that she did. No further questions. This murder was premeditated and deliberated. It was committed after the defendant had waited and watched for her opportunity to act. And that's consistent with first degree murder. And that's the verdict I will ask you to return. job at the front desk. <laughs> How did the gun get to the courthouse today, Ellie? Um. I had it in my car. I, uh, I was just hoping to God I wouldn't have to use it. I went to the car and just put this little 22 in my pocket, and I just kept thinking that if it was meant to be, it'll happen. When did you decide you were going to bring the pistol to court? Oh, probably about two and a half years ago. No, no, no I put it in the car this morning. Like I said, I, I didn't plan it. But I also planned, don't intimidate me. Had you been drinking or taking any medication today? No, 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 I, I, I was in, no, I mean... I can't say I was in my right frame of mind, but, um, no, 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 I definitely, um, no, the only narcotic I was on was pain. 
How do you feel, Ellie? Um, scared. <gasps> I feel really scared. Um, see, I don't know if I did the right thing. I don't know if I did the wrong thing. I mean, how the hell can you kill somebody and not know if you did the right thing? Look, I know the Ten Commandments aren't multiple choice. I'll be excommunicated. I won't go to heaven. No. No, but I just feel if Danny, you know, I just hope that he made it right with God. Because if he didn't, you know, that would have been... Well, that, that would be a crime. What he did, he hasn't a right. Because are these little boys going to be bisexual? I mean, what is this man creating? He doesn't have the right to play with their manhood. I hope I didn't create more pain for my children, you know. Because now I don't have a mama. Maybe I'm not God, but I'll tell you what. I'm the closest thing to it for all the other little boys he would have hurt. He finally paid, and I'm not sorry. I'd do it again. What's going to happen if, if my son sees someone he doesn't like and he kills him because that's what Mama did? And I just kept thinking, Ellie, you've got the guts to end the pain. You've got the guts to do it. And that's what I, that's what I feel I did. I want to be home. Um, could I get a copy of this? Because, you know, it's not, um, it's not every day that you kill someone. When people die, I believe that's when they'll have their business with God. If he truly knew the Lord and knew that what he did was not right in the sight of God, I believe in my heart that though he was lying there dying like he was, if right then and there he repented and asked God to forgive him for what he did, then he's clear. Can you drive his mom? Can you tell me where he is, please? to the crime, the case may have to be prosecuted by the state attorney general's office. If convicted of first-degree murder, Nestler could be looking at life in prison. son insisted on speaking directly to reporters. If my mom's watching out there, I just want her to know that Becky and me are okay and that I love her and I'm not afraid anymore. <laughs> Local authorities say they were not prepared for the crowds that have gathered in front of the courthouse in support of Nestle. Her arraignment on murder charges is scheduled for Tuesday. Nestler, people have filed an open charge of one count of murder. To that charge, how do you plead? 
not guilty by reason of temporary insanity. In an extraordinary gesture of support, the bondsman who posted the $500,000 bail has not asked the family for the customary 10% payment. I was, uh, I was having an ice cream with, uh, with Ellie's son, and uh, he looked at me and asked me if I was the person that was going to be bailing out his mommy, and, uh, I mean, what would you do? It's Rose is love. Love for my children. I love you, Ellie. I love you so much. <laughs> you people out there are helping to keep me strong. I mean, it wasn't easy what I did, but out of this tragedy, I think... Some good came out of it. Like I said, I don't like what I did. I don't think you should take the law into your own hands, but I feel that the judicial system should be standing right up next to me when I get tried for murder. Cards and letters from across the world. Okay, guys, listen to this one. Listen to this. Dear Ellie, I wish I could be sending you more money, but my husband is recovering from surgery and things are hard for us at this time. We send our blessings and wish there were more people in the world like you. Wow. And here's a check. Oh, oh hold the check wow. up. Three dollars! Yay! Hold on, wait, wait, wait. Listen to this one. Here's a dollar fifty in case you need more bullets. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Dear Ellie, I am 13 years old. 25. Oh, wait, guys. Listen. I'm 13 years old, and I have been molested by my father and my uncle since I was four. I had big fights over whose turn it is. I'm proud of you, and I love you. I can see that. I was dead, my only reason. So what I think, if there should be, like, you know, there's all this energy, there should be, like, an organization, like a foundation, you know, like Mothers Against Drunk Drivers, only for the children, with an 800 number that they could call, and the kids would answer the phones and lobby for, for harder sentences for molesters. And, well, we, uh, Janie has this, um, we would call it Caring Hearts United, and... Um, well, Janie's made this beautiful thing. you got to see it. Child Abuse Refuge Involving Nestler's Grief, Healing Emotion and Reforming the System. United Nonprofit Institution Treating Emotional Distress. But, uh, I don't know. I mean, now it's the 800 number is $1,000 a month, and the nonprofit license is, you know, now I don't know. I mean, if I go to prison, I... I hope it goes okay for your mom. Thanks. I have to ask you something. Yeah? Did it feel good? Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, I'm sorry. It's just going to hurt a little bit. Just, just a little bit. Here we go. I got it. I got it, honey. Mom? Yeah? You can't go to jail. Honey. I'll kill myself if you go to jail. I swear I will. That's just a standard personality test, Ellie. You just answer the questions, true or false, and remember there's no right or wrong answer, okay? Okay. Okay. I have little or no trouble with my muscles jumping. Uh, I'm sorry, what? I have little or no trouble with my muscles jumping. Um, true? Wait, 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 um, is that no trouble? I, that would, uh, that would, false, I think. Okay. Yeah. My soul sometimes leaves my body. Um. Ellie, true or false, my soul sometimes leaves my body. I can't be taken away from my kids right now. Please. Please, doctor, please. Just, I need a verdict of temporary insanity, please. Without that, I am lost. I'm lost. I just, I need that. Please. Please. Are those her words? Without that, I'm lost? Yes. Was she on her knees with you, pleading when she said that? Yes. In the last weeks, you have heard entirely conflicting scenarios of how that gun got to the Jamestown courthouse on April 2nd. But as we close, let me say that no matter how that gun got to the courthouse that day, there is no time requirement built into the concept of premeditation except that it precede the murder. All I have to show for you to acquit Ellie Nessler right now is the heat of passion. The heat of passion? 
the hottest passion imaginable, her child vomiting, the fiend about to get away. The district attorney had no intention of plea bargaining a repeat child molester. There's no question that Daniel Driver's case would have gone to trial and that if convicted, he was looking at 40 years in state penitentiary. For Ellie to have believed when she walked into that courtroom that the cops knew, approved, and had green-lighted her shooting of Daniel Driver, that was delusion. On that basis, the only verdict you can return is that she was legally insane on April 2nd of this year. She may have been angry, she may have been in pain, but ultimately the decision is that she was legally sane when she shot Daniel Driver. The she-bear, the lioness, the wolverine, come near her child and she will bite. God bless her for that. God bless her for all of us. Because if that instinct is ever weaned out of us, like it is in the novels 1984 and Brave New World, we will perish. We will perish. People are not she bears. People think, they reason, they make judgments. When you think of him lying there in blood, shackled, I want you to remember what he did. Because as surely as God's hand is in all human activities, this too was watched by God. A good parent puts her hand on her child's shoulder and says, look, we're here to set things right. This may be a little stressful, but you'll get through it. And if you can't, it doesn't matter because I love you. And tonight you can stay up late and watch TV and have pizza and Ellie Nessler is not a hero. She committed a murder. And I ask that you recognize that fact and return a proper verdict. Thank you. That's 30 years. I'll only be as old as you are now. You're kidding. I can't wait to go to jail. Finally get a rest from you two schnooker booze. I'm just worried they'll give me manslaughter and I'll only get 8 to 15. Hey. Case of the jury has reached a verdict. Is that correct? Yes, we have. Will the clerk please read the verdict? We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Elena Star Nessler, guilty of voluntary manslaughter. We further find that the defendant, Elena Star Nessler, was legally sane at the time she committed the crime. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, is the verdict as read your verdict? Say you one, say you all. This matter is continued then to the imposition of sentence on October 29th at 1 p.m. That's eight weeks from today. Your Honor, we do have a motion for remand at this time based on the possible severity of sentence and based on the fact that this was a violent... A motion for what? Remand. Remand. To jail custody to jail at this time motion is denied the best thing for me and the kids is getting the hell out of town and going out into the woods into God's country we were out there for about a month and you wouldn't believe the change, the sweetness that came back into my little boy. That's what he needs, you know, his mama. His mama and no cameras and no reporters. And if he's in school, he's just not gonna heal. Not like that. Okay, now let's the other way. Okay, this way. Okay. Hello, here is my spout. When I get on the okay. 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 <laughs> Oh, 
I've gone over the MRI and I've gone over the biopsy and there's no question we're talking about a malignancy. Huh? When was your last checkup? Uh, about four months ago. Listen, do you think it'll make the judge go easier on me? Ellie. What? With this type of breast cancer, a survival rate of five years would be extremely fortunate. sources close to the president. In Sonora, California, convicted murderer Ellie Nessler has been found to be suffering from breast cancer. Doctors have given Nessler five years to survive, assuming a full course. It's my remorse, Jenny, for killing Danny Driver. It's how I'm paying. Therefore, Your Honor, we request a continuance of the sentencing hearing until uh, my client's condition can be assessed and we determine what treatment's necessary. I'm very sorry you're sick. Thank you. Medical report, the most recent. California correctional facilities have excellent on-site staff who can provide medical care, including radiation and chemotherapy for any illness. Medical care in California state prisons is substandard at best. Now, every class action lawsuit based upon medical negligence brought against the Department of Corrections in the past 10 years has been won or settled in favor of the plaintiff inmates. Isn't he doing great? Isn't he turning into a little man? <laughs> Hi, honey! <laughs> oh. So, uh, what happens now? Well, now I file my report with the judge. What are you going to say? Well, it'll be, um... It'll be quite a lengthy report. Stripped of media hype, hysteria, horn honking, and bumper sticker judgments, this simply is a case of one individual unlawfully killing another. It's tragic and ironic that the young son, allegedly victimized by the victim in this case, is now again being victimized, this time by the defendant's own actions. This officer cannot help but observe that there has been little or no expression of remorse, or at the very least, a reaching out to the surviving members of the victim's family. No thinking person would care to view a society in which the courtroom becomes yet another arena for lawlessness. This officer respectfully recommends that probation be denied. And the defendant 
imprisoned in the state prison for a term of 15 years. Do judges do what the probation department says to do? Some do. Okay, keep them closed, keep them closed. Don't open, don't open, and open! Oh, you right. Oh, let's see, what are we gonna name you? Uh, what are my ears <laughs> How about you? Uh, How about dollars? Back with Morning Toast on KCBJ. What else we got in the news here? Oh, oh, Judgment Day up in Sonora, California. The months of waiting come to an end. Ah, what's the suspense? She's gonna walk. The guy was pond scum. You know, the guy was something you find on the bottom of your shoe. She's gotta go down, man. She blew the guy away. You gotta go down for that. Oh, no, no, look, the judge doesn't give her probation. He better not go into any dark alleys without a bodyguard. How do you get Ellie Nestler into court? You crank her up. Your Honor, Ellie, Ellie, in a whole lot of ways, I know that we are a long way from what happened in Jamestown to to on April 2nd of last year. But today, of, of all days, we remember what happened in that room. We remember that there were victims of the defendant's crime. We remember the terror and chaos that this defendant caused. We remember that this defendant took out a gun pointed it at a human being and pulled the trigger. Again, and again, and again, and again, and again. We are asking here today that the court recognize that act for what it was and that it impose the maximum sentence provided by law. Thank you. Justice is always blind. And justice holds a scale, and that scale is always tipped. It's tipped to the side of mercy. I say this because I ask for justice for my client, Ellie Nessler. A woman whose child was subjectively and brutally savaged. Yes, we can let her die in a steel cage, watching television and eating bad food. That would be the easy way, the difficult thing would be to allow the role that history has designed for her to play to unfurl. I argue, Your Honor, for mercy. I argue that this court should give her probation. I thank you. Counsel, we're going to take a recess, and I'll Come back and we'll proceed with sentencing. So that about says it. Sentencing code, volume twelve. No, eight, please. Thanks. Hey, boy. You won't believe the red-tailed squirrels I just found. This letter to you in the hope that you will be merciful when you sentence me. My son needs the opportunity to heal. Please, Judge, you are holding my life and my children's lives in the palm of your hands. The events of April 2nd amounted to nothing more or less than an execution of Daniel Driver. What if Daniel Driver's mother decides to blow Ellie Nestler away? And the woman must have loved her son, too. Then where are we? The prospects of my client's recovery from her illness are magnified immensely 
by the support she would receive from her children and her sisters. What do we know about Ellie Nessler's mothering skills? We know that on the day of the hearing, she yelled at her sick and vomiting son about what tennis shoes to wear to court. Women with serious illness at California state prisons do not receive adequate care. I still see the blood. I still hear the gunshots echoing through the courtroom. The nausea hasn't stopped. The nightmares, the flashbacks. It's time. So beautiful. Helly. Court is now in session. Your Honor, may we stand for sentencing? It's not necessary. It's ordered that probation be denied and that the defendant be imprisoned in the state prison for a total of 10 years. The defendant will be remanded at this time to the custody of the sheriff the delivery by him to the director of the Department of Corrections in execution of this sentence. Ask him if I can see my children. The doctors gave her five. The judge gave her ten. For KNSC Sacramento, this is Terry Rawlings in Sonora, California. Hello? Is it mommy? get your shoes on. I'll come break you out. No, oh, honey. They have 15 men out there. We can escape through that window right now. God will take care of us, okay? God will take care of us. Trust that. Trust that. Okay? Okay. Promise me you will not die in prison. I promise, honey. Promise me you won't die until I have children. <sighs> um, I can't promise that. Sweetie, let, let me let me hold Brandon, okay? Come here, sweetie. Come here. Oh, my babies, my babies, my babies. Oh, honey, don't worry about the puppies. Oh my gosh. Someone's gonna pay for those puppies. Nobody's gonna take them away from you, okay? Nobody. Oh no, 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 no. Don't you start crying, because then I will, and nobody. You hear me? Nobody's gonna see me cry, okay? You either, okay? It's gonna be all right. It's gonna be okay. God will take care of us, okay? God. Okay. Okay, we gotta go. We gotta go, okay? Okay, come on, sweetie. It's gonna be all right. It's gonna be all right. Come on, sweetie. It's okay. <laughs> Sentence. It was fair. 
Remember the shock we all felt when a California mother walked into a small town courtroom and shot Daniel Driver, the man accused of molesting her young son? Now to some, she's a cold-blooded murderer. In Sarajevo, another day, another broken life. Parson was suspected in... Avenge not yourselves, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good.